Hello, people of the internet. My name is George, the artist here at Leafy Games. And I'm Preston, the programmer. And we are here to talk about the scientist update. Uh, we have a few new things to show you. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I just wanted to reiterate that these class specific updates uh, do not mean we're necessarily finished with these classes or uh, the classes are completed in any way. They're really meant to get us uh, to a basic level through the classes. We're trying to understand the role of each one and trying to build a role. That's mainly the, the point of these, these updates. Not necessarily to, to get these classes fully done or you know how we finally envision them to be. But besides that, we'll talk about the, what we did add. So um, we'll start with um, some of the new screens. These, these are the scientist screens. Um, you'll notice that they uh, have to do with some things. So the computer, virus, and sensor screen. Sensor screen is not in this update. It will be, uh, it will be in the game soon, though, in a future update. Uh, but what we do have is a few new uh, screens. So you can use these to tab between uh, different, the different sections of the screen. So this one uh, uh, yeah, has multiple sections, and these are very important, specifically this one. This one has, is related to the programs currently installed on your ship. And these programs, these are specifically warp drive programs. Um, they require, uh, they have a very specific requirement for charging and using. Um, and that's related to these blue uh, little areas. These are your charge nodes, these are your charge bays. And uh, these will allow you to charge up these programs. So you can see these little circles. So for example, this is an instant warp charge program. When I execute, it will fully uh, charge my warp drive. So currently, it's not charged at all. It's uh, totally a cold start. But if we run this, we'll see that it utilized its charges. Uh, those three circles are now empty. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But also, you can see that the uh, jump computer's done. It's ready. Ready for a jump immediately. So um, that's the sort of things these programs can provide you with. They, they offer uh, gameplay elements that aren't available through any other system. And we hope to really expand on these in the future and make them really cool and interesting and a big part of the scientist's role. So we can talk a little bit about how these charge. So I, I said earlier, these are warp drive programs. So what does that mean exactly? It means you charge them with the warp drive, and in very specific circumstances uh, will they charge. So in this case, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to jump, I just need to give the ship a target so I can quickly do that. And you'll see I can start to charge up one of these programs a little bit. And we do that by uh, actually jumping to a new unexplored sector. So if you jump to a sector you've already been to, uh, Warp Drive won't be able to charge. If you jump to a totally new unvisited sector, uh, that will allow your Warp Drive to charge your programs. Specifically, this one can charge uh, two programs, or one program twice, and we'll get into that in a moment, but uh, we'll do that actually in this case. So this warp drive charging program requires three charges. I'm only gonna be able to give it two in this single jump. So this, uh, our warp drive supports two charging bays, so uh, we, can, we can charge this up with two on one jump, and I'll do that right now. We'll just wait for the loading screen. And we can check on our programs. You can see it has two. Now it's two out of three. Which means I can't actually execute it right now. Um, but if I charge it once more, uh, if I, I just need, it just needs one more charge and it's ready to go and execute again. Um, and different warp drives have different number of charge nodes. And uh, so you can use them in different ways and they'll have different advantages and stats, so. And just to chime in, different programs also have, uh, you know, different requirements for charging. So like the instant warp drive charge, the program that my brother used, has it requires three uh, jumps in order to, uh, for it to get fully charged because that's like a really, uh, really valuable mm -hmm. program, so. Correct. There are, uh, for this sec for example, this one requires uh, just one charge to, to execute. 
So you can uh, basically use that one immediately after a chump, if it, provided it's in a charge, charge bay. Um, so those are some of the programs. We also have viruses. Um, viruses are specific types of programs that actually we have another uh, program here. This is instantly remove all viruses. But uh, we also have some viruses. Viruses are a very specialty type of program. Uh, they also, the same way as the other programs, require the warp drive. Um, uh, the reason for that is because uh, the viruses have to be uniquely generated each time uh, for in-game lore reasons. So, uh, yeah, it requires that quantum uh, processing that the warp drive does during the jump. And it can only do a certain amount per jump. So let's activate a virus. This one's called Phalanx, and uh, it's going to disable shield recharge. So it's a, pr it's a pretty good one. It's a particularly good one. So I've activated it, and now this is on my uh, virus broadcast list. So for the next minute, it's going to attempt to give uh, all the ships in the sector, and in this case, uh, two small security drones, this Phalanx virus. And when they have it, they'll have it forever, um, or at least until uh, you need to be able to destroy them, but uh, viruses are relatively permanent in how they work. And if you, you can get viruses too. Um, they're relatively permanent, and we'll go over uh, in just a moment the ways you do get rid of them. But they don't, uh, just because this is done broadcasting, see, I actually just got lucky and infected both of them. Uh, they will actually remain infected even past this countdown. So, um, but uh, just won't broadcast to new ships. If a new ship entered the uh, the fight after this is done, you'll see in a second. Oh, we're done. Um, it's no longer broadcasting. But you can see that it is it is actually already infected. So they are actually uh, if we if we attack them, uh, their shields their shields will not be able to recharge. So these are little advantages you can get with viruses. They can be really quite uh, quite powerful. Another great thing is that it acts as a sort of an AOE effect. Every ship that is uh, in this sector will get hit with the uh, with the virus, which is we think is a a, a nice simple way uh, to make the virus really effective. Correct. We uh, added also a new drone type, the tactical support drone. And that one will be able to give you viruses. So do uh, do be careful when you, if you run into that, uh, and we'll let you. We'll let you figure that out, but uh, we're going to move on to uh, another part of the update related to the startup sequence. We should also mention real quick, um, when my brother initiated the Phalanx virus, uh, you might have noticed that it was it had it went through several attempts to infect the uh, enemy drones. And that's because uh, it's it was actually attempting to breach their firewalls or cybersecurity defenses. Correct. There's a new ship component we can show you. Uh, cyber defense processor. I have one here. Um, a pretty good one, 8 defense. Um, which uh, is going to slow down or prevent uh, enemy viruses from entering your ship. Um, most viruses will eventually make it through, uh, provided uh, they don't run out of broadcast time. But um, Essentially, it just it makes it a lot harder for viruses to uh, infect your ship, and the longer a virus takes, the more likely you just kill them before it infects you. So, um, it can be very useful, very expensive components, uh, and there will be options in the future for upgrading that. And uh, different ships will have different ones, and um, it should be interesting. But, uh, but yeah, I guess also real quick, I'll cover this uh, search tab which isn't being fully used yet. It's more of a, a little bit more of a preview of what's going to happen, but you can do some interesting things with it. For example, I can enter uh, a sector number and do a search, and then give me a little bit of information. Uh, for example, this is sector 158, and it's, I can, uh, it can tell me that the WD Corp uh, currently is the owner of this faction, does not have a planet, and it's 87.1 distance. I don't know what that unit is yet, so I mean, I, we'll uh, figure that out. But um, yeah, so you can get you can get a little bit of information about um, uh, basically just any sector. 
Um, and this in the future we will be able to give you more information once you've visited it, uh, perhaps events happened and such. You'll also have uh, general information you can look up. Um, th this is going to be built into a uh, alongside other parts of the game to help uh, people just look up information specific to what they're doing. But for right now you can just enter numbers and get uh, uh, basically a da database about general information of the galaxy and things in it. It looks like a small security drone might be attacking me. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there and uh, we'll switch out uh, and uh, talk about the ship startup sequence. Sounds good. <clears throat> uh, so we switched to the uh, cruiser um, to show off this next uh, system we've been working on. And uh, some of you might notice that these all the screens are off. Most of the lights are off, and uh, it's quite, it's basically the ship has been turned off. And uh, that is uh, what we added. So I'm gonna actually activate my flashlight by pressing F um, and head back to the engineering room on the Intrepid, I mean uh, cruiser, sorry. So you can see lights are off, it's, kind of, it's actually quite spooky. Um, it's, we're pretty happy with how, how it feels. And uh, so we added this, we call it the uh, switchboard. Um, it's one of the uh, things that the engineer will get to play with and stuff like that. So there's three big switches and a small screen. And it's actually the only screen that's actually on right now. It's sort of uh, sort of like a, like a you know, BIOS or something. It's not even probably a, a part of the ship OS. But uh, you can see it says pull lever one. And so basically there's three levers, so we just click on the first lever, lights turn on, and everything like that. And um, if we were, go, if we were uh, to go to the bridge, the screens would be on, but they would be sort of like not uh, functioning. They, uh, they would be like all staticky and stuff like that. Um, but now it's telling us to boot the ship operating system. So we, that takes a second, you just have to click that button right there. Pull the second lever. And now uh, prime the warp core, and then the third lever. So now the, the entire ship is operational and active. Yet there's one extra step we need, and that's um, to go to the computer screen and provide manual control to the rest of the ship. So you can see all the, all the screens are just sort of, you know, they're not uh, getting any signal because the ship is just uh, automatically controlling everything right now. Um, so you just override it and everything should be working and functional. And the reason we added this was because, well, we thought it'd be cool to give players more control over the ship itself, but it's also uh, one of the ways to combat viruses. So yeah, during uh, your travels, you will almost assuredly at one point or another, uh, your ship will become infected with a virus. And if you do not have the uh, Remove All Viruses program, which is, uh, where is it? It might not actually be on the uh, cruiser. Um, but it, it might be on the Intrepid, we'll see. Uh, but if you don't have that program and you can't, uh, or it's not charged or something, and you need to get rid of a virus now, you can shut off the ship and basically do a manual reboot. And uh, when you turn the, uh, the ship back on again, uh, it will be free from viruses. However, it will also have stopped broadcasting any viruses that you um, uh, were activating. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I think that pretty much solves it. And if you want to shut off the system, um, pretty much right now, all you could do is just flip the first switch and it'll pretty much just create a chain reaction to switch everything off. Sort of, that's like a pretty uh, dramatic way of doing it but that's basically like pulling the plug from the uh, wall. Um, yeah, in the future there will be consequences for that, um, potentially, so we'll see. Um, anything else I missed, Preston? Um, so yeah, uh, really the main purpose is, is going to be to erase uh, hostile viruses on your ship, um, probably after combat, so that you just don't get reinfected immediately. Um, but uh, right now it's not fully implemented. Uh, for example, 
the reactors, th things will still get power even uh, when the first switch is off. But in a future patch, that will get fixed as well. And these things are really going to affect uh, how the ship functions at a very core level. So. And uh, it's important to follow the steps. Uh, it wants me to boot the OS right now, and it refuses to allow me to continue with the switches until I do. So, um, but yeah, this could be a, um, you know, a, an effective way of getting rid of uh, viruses, but it also sort of leaves you vulnerable for a short period of time while you go through this process. So you have to uh, use it wisely. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, now we'll probably uh, just talk about some of the other general improvements we've made to the game. Yep, so probably the biggest one is going to be uh, spent some time working on the chat system. Uh, for it. And we've added uh, support for much longer messages. Um, and we use support word wrap, and you can send the messages and they, and they wrap. It's pretty simple stuff, but we didn't have it before, and it makes a huge deal. So. Um, and we also have some more options for customizing it. So I can get a few more messages. Just um, You can see that it's uh, starting to call, call off the messages. We have a few more options. So we can actually change, can change the font size of the font, or I'm sorry, of the chat. And, uh, and a few other things. You can change the width, which will change. Uh, you can make it take more of the screen when it wraps. Um, and you can change the number of uh, lines that it will call up to. So, uh, depending on your screen resolution and your preferences, you can modify this in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, we also added uh, a screen tilt to the options menu. I can show that off. Uh, let's go over to the bridge. Da -da -da. And, uh, oh, whoops, it's not uh, started up yet, but we can still show off the tilt. So you can see that they're sort of tilted toward me with that, and then I can take it the other way, and they're tilted away. So, it, it, you know, maybe you like to play like this, I don't know. <laughs> but we offer, we offer the uh, support, uh, and right in the middle is just straight up. So we offer a little bit of options now for people who uh, might prefer the screens uh, tilted a different way. So we, uh, yeah. Uh, we also added uh, lettering uh, for enemies. Um, so when you join, in a, when you uh, go to a sector with uh, security drones, which we're not currently in right now, mm -hmm. but uh, it'll say A, B, C, D, and it'll go down as far as it needs to, and uh, it becomes pretty important, especially when uh, certain ships are infected with viruses and others aren't, or if you need to communicate, uh, you know, focus fire on B, or uh, you know, avoid. Uh, the incoming attacks from C or something like that, it becomes a lot easier doing that other than saying, uh, watch out for that security drone that's sort of to our right, you know? Um, so we would think that it's just a more of effective uh, way of communicating and um, reading the, the battle. Absolutely, it's a, yeah, just it's a communication tool. Uh, you can see you can see there it says A. Uh, when you have mole ships, yeah, A, B, C, D, etc. But uh, simple stuff, but we feel it probably would be useful. So, um, so we've had a lots of little changes all over the place, but I think I think we covered the the bigger stuff. You can check out the release notes for more details. And uh, as always, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you think of the new changes. If you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, and uh, yeah. Have a good one, guys.